a few days ago, I showed you how to stack C-Star Mosaic images using WBPP in PixInsight. And a few of you asked me, is it possible to do in Cyril? And the good news is that it is, or it will be. My friend Rich from Deep Space Astro showed a sneak peek at some of the features that are coming in Serial 1.4. And one of those features was mosaic stitching. So I've been experimenting with the dev version of Serial and I wanted to test to see if I can stack those mosaic images using Serial. And to my surprise, it worked really well. Kudos to the Serial team for all the improvements that are coming our way. And I don't think that C-Star mosaic images was part of their intention, but it works and it's a great benefit to us. So let's dive into Cyril and take a look at how I did this. So I'm running a development version of Cyril here. This will eventually get pulled into Cyril 1.4 whenever that happens. And this version has the couple of features that we'll be using to st stack mosaics from the C-Star. Just like the Pixinsight video, if you've seen it, we're going to start in this directory, which has all of my M31 mosaic individual frames. If you look at just the little preview here, you can see that M31 shifts around quite a bit. We're going to take just the fits files and put them into Cyril and then we will convert them. So I'm just going to do conversion. Uh, and then here uh, I could do dot FIT, look for them, but it actually looks for uh, 270 items, which includes all my tree files. And I don't want to stack those. So I'm just going to go to view details type and then I'll just select all the fits files here. This is what I need, so click and drag. There we go, and that's 247 files. Before I do anything, I wanna make sure that your home directory is set. I set mine in one of my random uh, hard drives here. I'm calling it serial experiment drive. So this is where I've been testing. I have all my files here, and I'm gonna name this a sequence. So let's do M31 mosaic. I want to debear it, and if your computer is set up for sim links, click this as well. It'll click convert. And this will take uh, maybe a minute or so to go through all the frames. And you can see that the bear pattern is uh, Gerbaga, GRGB, GRBG. I always say that wrong. And that took 13 seconds to complete, so great. And we can do an auto stretch here, an unlinked auto stretch. We can see what the frames look like. Yeah, looks, looks fine. And we have the sequence here. Now the first tool that Cyril added that makes all this possible is batch astrometry. So if you go to tools, astrometry, go to image plate solver. This picked up the image parameters from this file, but at the bottom, we have this new option here that says solve whole sequence. This did not exist in the previous versions. And this will allow us to solve each of these frames one by one, and then we can register them based on the astrometry data instead of the star data that we see where it tries to match up the stars. And you also wanna check this box that says fetch stars for each image. And what this will do is it'll call the solver for each of the image individually. If you find yourself that you need to redo this over and over again, because there are, there have been some failures, uh, make sure you click skip already solved images. It'll save you a ton of time, but just check all of these, okay? And make sure that your pixel size and focal length are set. If you're using the C-Star, either the S30 or the S50, this should be automatically set coming in from the C-Star itself. So we're gonna click okay. And this actually works pretty quickly and it will find the stars needed and then it will start solving them. So I'll let this finish. All right, that took a couple of minutes and depending on how fast your computer is, how much resources you have, it could be faster or slower. So that's something to keep in mind. And now the frames have image solved. So I can close this up. I'll go to sequence. You know, if I open up my frames list, we'll see that they all have X and Y coordinates where, you know, the X coordinates for the first one is zero because that's where Andromeda is centered. Some of these are pretty close to zero and they all have astrometry data. So if you come here and you notice that there were some failures, the console this time didn't fail, but I have, while testing, I've had this fail with several types of images, so some of my other images. You'll see here it says, you know, unable to solve. If you see that on the frames list here, the X and Y coordinates will both be zero, zero, and it'll be unchecked. 
All right, let's pretend that image 201 was not solved. This was 00, zero and then it became unchecked automatically by Cyril. So the way to fix this is to check this again, make sure this frame is selected, make sure it's blue, and then you do the image solver once again on that image. You can do solve whole sequence, but make sure you click skip already solved images, otherwise you'll just waste time and then let it go. If you have multiple images that fail, just check them all and then do the image solver as many times as you need to until you get until they're all solved and they're all selected. The most that I've had to do it was four times for this exact piece of data because it was the image solver kept failing. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to skip calibration. Uh, all the C-star images should be calibrated already coming out of it, coming out of the C-star. We're going to go straight to registration. Normally when we're at this stage, you'd normally do like global star alignment, deep sky, where Cyril will autom automatically pick out the stars find the brightest ones for each image, align them, and then do the alignment for you, the registration for you. But now we're going to do apply existing registration. And this will also take into account the solved, the image solved data. So it'll use the astrometric data and try and place it into a grid based on where they're supposed to be. So once you have that, you click on, you know, make sure the selected or all is of the sequence is selected. The framing method, you want to do maximum. Uh, if you did current, it'll take the frame dimensions, which is going to be 1080 by 1920 here. But if you do maximum and you click on estimate, it'll actually analyze all the frames and tell you how large of an output it expects. That's 2672 by 3616. If you watch my Pix Insight video, I, you noticed that I needed to make my reference frame narrower and longer, and, and this proves it. So this is, this is what we have. Everything else can be kept default, and then we're going to click Go Register. All right, that finished faster than I expected, and you can see that this frame is now tilted a little bit. So if you go back to the sequence, we now have registered frames. Uh, you can click on the frames list here, or the frames list down there, and if we select through them, you can see that they're all being shifted by a tiny bit, but it's tr keeping that little blue circle on the Andromeda galaxy, so that that will be the center of our image. Great, so that's working. So now the thing to do is to stack. You can leave everything default. I am not going to change a thing here. Um, keep it on Windsor Eye Sigma clipping. It'll get rid of the trails. And you can click Start Stacking. We'll talk about a stack stitching in a second after this is done. All right, that completed, and that that took so little time, only a few minutes, and this is what we have. And comparing this to what we saw in PixInsight, it's it's pretty similar, aside from the the cropped output that came out here. This is it's the exact same output. The noise in the corner looks the same. Everything everything else looks pretty much the same. I know Rich also showed you the stack stitching, where you can border the feathers or fe feather the borders and smooth things out. But if you look around here, there's actually no real borders to feather out. It blended in very smoothly. And this has to do with the way the C star takes the images because like almost every piece of area here that I did where my mouse is hovering is a, the center of the frame at some point because of the spiral pattern that it takes. So it all just blends in and it looks pretty cool. So you know, processing this is not part of this video, but feel free to do your normal post-processing in Cyril here. And this could probably be taken a little bit further with uh, a custom script that does that does all the steps I showed you um, with one click instead of like five clicks that I showed you here. But pretty cool, pretty happy with this. Good job to the Cyril team. And if you have any questions about any of this process, uh, let me know in the comments below. That was a very quick process and I'm honestly really impressed with the output. The stack data that we saw is pretty much the same as what we got out of PixInsight. And for this session, Cyril worked a lot faster than PixInsight did, which, which really blew my mind. And this was stacking 247 frames, which is still quite a lot. But right after this session, I tested stacking my almost 600 frames of the Horsehead Nebula and that region. And 
that process took much longer. The registration process, I forget how long it took, maybe an hour or so, and the stacking process took four hours, which is an hour and a half longer than what the entire process of Pixinsight took. If you have any questions about the process, I know it's not out yet, so most of you won't be able to try it until it gets released, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And I've been having a lot of fun with my Seastar S30 over the last couple of weeks, and I've been hosting almost weekly remote star parties. So if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe and come back and join me for one of those live streaming sessions. And also please feel free to join our Discord server. The invite link is in the description below where you can join a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers. And I am also very active there where we can have great conversations about space. Thank you for watching. Keep looking up.